Elric here. Welcome once again back to the motherboards.org YouTube channel. Glad to see you back here. Every day I get comments on the channel and I get emails both on Facebook and in my personal email box asking me what video card do I think dollar for dollar is the absolute best video card. Today I'm here to discuss that and I'm here to discuss overclocking a couple of those cards. I just want to say that if DisplayPort which to most people means absolutely nothing is not important, that I have to say that the 550 Ti dollar for dollar, I think is the number one choice of video card. And I have a lot of reasons for saying this. Before I was using my computer here, I had the GTX 590 in it. Those of you who follow the channel, you guys know that I built a whole system off this, like a super $4,000 system, crazy thing. Well, that said, I had to pull that card out of the system I was using. And after that, I had a couple of these 550 Ti cards that I had in my lab that I've been really wanting to use and get some projects done on. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna try those cards and move them over here. I've always liked the 550. I've always thought for the price being around 130 bucks, it's an excellent card. So what I did is I got two of the best cards I could get my hands on that were in my lab. Now this one right here is the Direct CU, Direct Copper one. It's an overclock card directly from the factory. It comes at 975 megahertz. Now I got another overclock card as well. Went ahead and got the MSI 550 TX. This is their, like, their Cyclone Edition one. It's got a big propeller blade in it, keeps everything cool. This is the second card. It's also overclocked at 975 megahertz. My really, my major point about this is though, is that I took these two cards and I put them in SLI mode. I was able to overclock them, not by a whole lot, but up to 1000 megahertz on the core the shader to 2000 and the memory up to 2100. Now I know that's not a you know a grand overclocking in the grand scheme of things, but when you think about it, the base clock speed of this for core is at 900 megahertz. So I have it at 100 megahertz over overclock, completely stable using MSI's Afterburner software. So for basically 260, $265, I have an SLI system that was able to replace my 590. And as far as the straight gameplay goes, I don't notice any difference whatsoever. I had to just make a couple of different changes on Crisis 2, down from like the supreme insane level down to the one right below it. That's not that much of a sacrifice. I don't notice anything visually. So now on the screen here, I have MSI's Afterburner version 2.1. There's a newer version out, but it's a beta version, so I don't know if I'd really suggest using that. Right now you can see everything on the board is in its standard state. Nothing's overclocked, voltage is the same, core clock is 975, the shader clock is at 1950, memory clock is at 2052, and we have the fan, which you see is auto, and the fans are very, very low. Now I've made a profile to profile one, I'm going to go ahead and apply the profile one and you can instantly hear the fans down below me begin to speed up and increase. Now this is at a thousand for the core clock, 2000 for the shader clock and the memory clock is at 2100 and I have the fans glowing on fine. You can see the temperatures haven't really changed all that much. The only problem is when I increased the thing past 8,000 on the core clock, I started to have problems with it, even when I increased the voltage. So I'd have to say these cards pretty much right out of the box are overclocked. But my main thing is how easy it was to take two cards, put them in the system and do it. Right now, I just want to go ahead and start up something, let you guys check it out. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and jump into Crisis 2. I know a lot of you guys out there think this game isn't great for benchmarking, but I just got to tell you, if it's just plain, downright fun, I love this game. I've got the two 550Ti's in SLI mode. You guys saw them overclocked and everything. Now, I have the frames capped off at 60 seconds on here just because I don't want any screen tearing or whatever. My main point of this though is to look how great the game is playing. 60 frames per second, you can never notice anything and having anything higher than that is pretty much meaningless to the human eye. It's just bragging rights. So let's hop on in here. Resume my game. I'm actually pretty far in this game. I, I actually like this game quite a bit. It's been a lot of fun. Okay, actually some of the frames are actually jumping past 60 and going under. So here we go, if I can get in there, just let you guys check this out. I'm gonna go try to find some action. I guess the action's this way. This is NanoVision. Everybody becomes heat structured, you can see them. There's gonna be a bunch of aliens coming now. All of the Crytek effects in here are, are really nice. Look at the rainfall and everything. Here, look at all this stuff right here. Look at the debris flying by right here. As well as me getting my butt kicked and shot in the back by somebody. 
this nasty little alien booger. Better put on some armor before I die. And look at this. Look at all the effects. Look at this stuff flying by right here. All the lighting effects and everything. Now this is just $300 in video cards, 27 inch monitor. Excellent. Look at the color variations. Up here in the corner, you can see the frame rates have barely ever dropped. They've only dropped to about maybe 54 when a whole bunch of stuff's coming on. Here's some nice lighting and smoking effects up here. Here's the smoke effects. Kill this alien real quick. There we go. Collect the nano points. Move my little self out of there. There I've died. But basically my main point is want to let you guys know is that I'm being able to play all my games. Let me show you guys the options and everything. Go into the advanced graphics. Everything's set on extreme. The only one higher is ultra. And when I had my 590s, I had everything set on ultra. These remain the same. I never saw any difference whatsoever at all in it. Graphics of oh, 1920 by 1080. System stacks at extreme. DirectX 11 enabled, playing perfectly fine. $300 with a video card is doing me almost as much good as having a $700 video card. That was the main point of my video. So that's it, guys. You guys are always asking me what I think really if the best card is. I think if you're on a budget and everything, that the 550 Ti is a serious winner for the entry-level video card stuff. People can say the $66 cards are entry-level video cards, but to me, those aren't. If you can only play an RTS game or something like that, and you're going to have really crappy frames per second in a first-person shooter game, that's not a video card for gaming. That's a video card for just barely stepping up. 550 Ti plays every game there is, plays them without a problem. Supports DirectX 11, has no problem playing anything. You get full NVIDIA support. You get all their 3D vision stuff. I can play a lot of games in 3D. The guy just kicked me down a coupon the other day for Street Fighter. It's awesome in 3D. I'll get to some videos of that later. But I just want to tell you guys, the 550 Ti is a serious card. I give it a thumbs up. It gets an editor's choice here. This video is two of those cards brought to you in SLI mode for less than $300 running Crisis 2 on Extreme settings. So you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys back here later on motherboards.org.